make a lot of videos talking about the current political environment. And often where I'll go is um, that folks on the left, liberals, you know, I know they feel strongly that, that Donald Trump shouldn't be president and, and he's doing a horrible job and um, maybe he's the worst president we've ever had, all those things, right? And I talk about how if the objective is to, to win over voters, to, to convince people who maybe aren't sure or support Donald Trump, they may want to try a different approach, right? The idea of demanding that people see it their way, dismissing anybody that could even think about voting for him or believe in anything that he says, it, it might not, although maybe justified, isn't most effective. It's important that I note, though, that the same holds true the other way, right? What, what I talked about in a recent video is this idea of accountability. If you are a Democratic politician and you're either speaking out on Trump or you're, you've run against uh, you know, Trump supporters in the Republican Party, whatever it is, when you call out Trump or other politicians like him that have won, you know, certainly you can put some of that, that blame, if you will, on the voters who, who are clinging to those views, assuming you think they're wrong. Um, but you have to take some accountability yourself. You have to acknowledge that, hey, <clears throat> I or we were the alternative, and a lot of people picked against us. So that has to say something about us, right? So that idea of accountability and, and just trying to be objective, and say, listen, I, 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 I might understand why you're compelled to, to kind of follow some of the things he's saying. Let me acknowledge that and try and see if we can work to find a better solution than him as president. That same concept holds true to the other side, though. And no, it's hard for me to, to, to articulate that better than in the concept of if you are a Trump supporter, right? If you are a reasonable, objective Trump supporter who believes, you know, for the sake of the country and, and, and the freedoms that we believe in and all those things that, you know, Trump has to be reelected because he's going to protect us against liberals or socialism or whatever it is, right? Um, I, 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 could, I could understand that math in my terms, right? I, I, could, I could see what that is because I think the Democratic Party and progressives perhaps have, have not approached it in the optimal way. But you have to be realistic, too. You have to acknowledge what Donald Trump is. And this isn't to say that uh, my view on him is the only view that matters. But, you know, I, I would argue that most reasonable people would look at Donald Trump, even those that might be voting for him. And oftentimes they think, I'm voting for him in spite of some of the ways he acts. Or even if you don't want to put it that way, right? Even if you like the fact that he's not a politician and he tells it like it is, and he, you know, is willing to fight back against uh, the other side, right? Even if you like all those things, I think if you close your eyes and you try and imagine what the ideal president looks like, and you could think throughout history, right? The obvious one that always comes to mind for people is like a George Washington. Or even if you just think about, you know, the optimal type of person that you want in that position of power um, that, that's making so many decisions, that has so much responsibilities, I would imagine you'd start to think through things like, well, you'd want somebody who was obviously really smart and sharp, um, somebody that was deeply thoughtful um, and analytical, somebody that was deeply reflective and self-aware and questioned and tried to be better, right? Always striving to try and be better. Somebody who was compassionate, somebody who was trying to um, bring people together and unite rather than divide. And in a lot of ways, it gets to some of the things we talk about in these videos, the think better, be better. You know, I mentioned reflective and aware. Somebody who doesn't um, just believe they have all the answers, but they're willing to acknowledge when they make a mistake. They're willing to entertain the possibility their view might be wrong and to seek if there might be a better way. You know, we also have talked about the philosopher king concept um, from, from Plato. And I think, you know, it's, it's somewhat in that vein, maybe not exactly like that, but in that vein where you want that person that's seeking wisdom, that's again, striving to be better. It's hard for me to imagine many people, Trump supporters, obviously, that could say that about Donald Trump. And again, you may still believe he's the right person to vote for. You might think, you know, given the options, he's who we need to elect in this country right now. And you, you could debate whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent. My point is, 
if you are going to be objective, if you're trying to unite the country yourself, you're trying to not divide further, and you expect or, or you look at you know liberals or Democrats and you say they're going way off the, the, the reservation, they're going too far, um, they're not reasonable anymore. Well, again, you need to be reasonable as well. And to me, the reasonable conclusion, even if you are planning to vote for him, is to say, listen, he's not the ideal president. The, the simple piece is, is the lack of self-reflection, the lack of accountability, the lack of um, questioning of self, right? Even if you thought he was right 70% of the time, 80% of the time, it's hard. I, I wouldn't agree with anybody that said he's right 100% of the time. But the, the common mantra from him is that, you know, he doesn't take responsibility. He's getting it all right. I think he said at one point, you know, if, if, if his campaign was running against George Washington prior to this pandemic hitting, like George Washington would have a tough time. So this inflated sense of self and ego that he has is so um, detrimental to all the things we talked about in terms of what you'd look for in an ideal president. So you have to acknowledge that. You have to own it. You have to be objective. You have to be reasonable. And you have to say that. You have to say, listen, here's, here, show your work. Here's why I would vote for Donald Trump. But I will be very honest about his downfalls and not in like a make light of it way of like, well, he talks kind of not the way I'd like, or maybe he shoots off at the hip too much. No, no, no. It's much deeper than that. There's a deep character issues in terms of your ability to question yourself and be self-reflective. There's deep character issues in terms of trying to bring the country together, right? Whether there's another side who's making that difficult on you or not, you've got the job of president. It's your responsibility to figure that out. You don't get to punt on that and say, well, they're not playing fairly, so I'm not playing fairly. So, right? Some, somebody has to be better. And if not the president of the United States, then who, right? Somebody has to be self-reflective and own their, their mistakes or their shortcomings or the areas where they could have been better. And again, if not the president of the United States, then who? So we have to be honest and say, when you think about the virtues and the values that you'd expect from a president, the things that you know, we often cherish in a George Washington, let's be honest and open and say, that's not Donald Trump. Nobody should, be, should shy away from saying that. It doesn't change the fact that you may think between him and Biden, he's the right person to vote for. I personally believe I, I would rather see neither of them be president. I don't think either of them are what we need in this country. But the point comes back to if, if we're trying, if the objective is to make the country better, we have to be honest and objective and realistic and reasonable when it comes to our assessments and how we're talking about different politicians and their policies.